Hey everyone, let's try something new today. I want to answer your questions, questions that you leave either in the video comments or that you left me in the community and in the cloud community when I asked you. I wanna answer these questions live, well, not live by the time you are watching the video, but I wanna answer them live uh, as I'm talking to the camera, it's unscripted. It's really the kind of advice that I would give you if we were working together, sitting next to each other, and then, you know, I, we, we get into a conversation like this. All right, let's do this. This one is from user code 404. <laughs> Great one. This person is in third year of their graduation and they want to become a good solutions architect as soon as they graduate or maybe even earlier. And they're asking how much percentage of a chance do I have that I will land a good profession if I start now, given that they're in third year and I expect that they still have a year or maybe a couple of years before they get on the job market. So um, I don't think the solutions architect job is an easy one. I think that creators make it sound easy, make it look easy to have you watch content and stuff like that. But it's not something that you could really become as a fresh graduate, as soon as you graduate from school. And, you know, not, not to go all pessimist here or anything, but let me tell you why. When, when a solutions architect joins an organization, the business people and the technical people trust them to build, design, maintain, deploy solutions that will be working and that will be uh, scaling and that will be secure and that will answer the needs of the business. And in order to do that, you need some experience because, you know, school is awesome. Um, you know, we learn a ton of stuff from school, but sometimes we need to fail in the real world. Like, I know it's, it's, it's cheesy at this point, but some of the lessons that I keep in mind, some of the rules that I keep in mind, uh, some of my rule of thumbs all came in from failures because I did something and then I learned from it. So really, I don't want to sound like uh, someone who doesn't have hope or someone who doesn't want you to continue doing what you're doing. It's awesome that you are preparing for the role and you haven't even uh, graduated yet. I just want to manage your expectations a little bit. I would say after you graduate, you want to get uh, working in a role where you could learn as much as you can about software, as much as you can about deploying applications, as much as you can about the cloud, right? And that's gonna open your eyes uh, into whether you actually want to follow this position or not, because maybe now you think that you want because of what you see in, you know, maybe you watch my day in a life uh, video or maybe you watch others and, and you're like, okay, this is interesting. But you get to, you know, maybe you'll work with a real solutions architect in, in your next company and then you listen to them and you see the work that they do and, and you'll be like, no, maybe I prefer to manage people. I want to be a manager. That's, that's my role. So yeah, I, I think I, I would say give yourself the time to discover, like there's a ton of career positions out there. There's a ton of job roles out there. So give your time give yourself, uh, sorry, the time to learn a little bit more about these before you make a decision to become a solutions architect and you're not going to be late. I started my first job in, 20, in 2008 and I only became a solutions architect in 2015, 2016. So, you know, that's like, I don't know, seven, eight years where I did the, uh, I would say the normal path of junior software engineer, intermediate, full stack developer, senior, team lead. And then I went to a manager role and because I thought that's what I like. I thought that's the natural progression. After a technical team lead, you become a manager. You know, that's, that's what they tell us. That's what, that's what I saw around me. But then I realized that I like more uh, solving technical stuff and I like more uh, solving solutions and not, not so much managing people and to each their own. That's where I did a 180 and reinvented myself as a solutions architect. My point is, after you try uh, a couple of, maybe you'll be a person who says, you know what, I love writing code. That's what I love. and. I don't want to do anything else. And there's absolutely no shame in that, regardless of what people will tell you. People will, will tell you, in order to be successful, you need to become a manager or director. But I know personally someone in Netflix 
who is paid half a million dollar a year, 500,000 US dollar a year, and their title is a senior software engineer. That's, you know, they, they write code. Granted, they are an exception, but that person is brilliant and they are able to write applications that can squeeze the latest bit of performance and they actually write code uh, that interacts directly with hardware for everything that is uh, video encoding and stuff like that. What I'm trying to say is being a software engineer is a career life, is a life career position, is a career life position is whatever, it's a position that you can have for life. Being a solutions architect is a career that you could have for life. Being a manager, being a team lead, you don't have to always have to keep pushing and always have to uh, uh, go up and up and up and up again. And in Silicon Valley, they tell you that if you don't change the job every couple of years, then you are a failure, but absolutely not. It's like, you know, my analogy here, my metaphor here is like you are climbing up a mountain and you know, any climber will tell you that there are plateaus. And so you climb and then you get to that first plateau and you might decide to just stay there and throw your tent there and rest for a couple of days and enjoy the scenery and take your breath. And some people will choose to stay there for a week. Some people will choose to stay there for one night and then climb up again. So like everyone's, everyone's uh, journey is different. You know, you can climb and then become a solutions architect and decide you'll love what you see. You start farming, you start having a couple of chicken here, you know, you start a farm and that's, you know, you look up and you're like, I'm happy for those people going up, but I found my piece here and you enjoy the sunsets every day and, and the air is fresh and whatever. So you don't have to really always have to go through this churn. Yeah, you're, I mean, you're in school. That's, that's what I hope I, people would told me when I was in school is, don't go after a title. You will, you will know it when you'll find it, but going, becoming a solutions architect right after school is really unheard of unless you join one of the programs for this, like what AWS called uh, TechU, AWS TechU, which means that AWS has a convention with some universities and they go pick people, pick students uh, from their last year of school, bring them into AWS's offices for six months, teach them everything about the job, pay them what they're learning, and then offer them a position uh, to become a solutions architect. And associate solutions architects, which means a junior. And I have actually a video where I interviewed one of these programs graduates. I'll leave the link in the description if you want to uh, uh, get her uh, opinion. And because um, we asked her a lot of questions about this program. But other than that, it's, it, it's a position that comes with, with experience. We have here a question on YouTube from Shell Fighter. Great username, by the way. How does one get started in being a solutions architect? I was thinking of doing a cert to get started, but otherwise I don't have much background. This is a question I get asked a lot. So let's try to answer it here. A solutions architect role is a mix of technical and business skills, right? The, the solutions architect is what I like to call a super translator. It's someone who can sit with business stakeholders, get their vision, how do they see the products working? What are the requirements? How many customers are going to be using this? How many users are we expecting in the first three months, six months, nine months, 10 years? What's the budget that we have? Uh, what country we are producing this or publishing this solution so we can understand the regulations and, and things like that. Then you get those business requirements and that's just one part of the puzzle. And then you sit with your infrastructure people, your security people, your developers, the tech leads, and then you get their vision as well, their side of the story as well. What are the frameworks that they think are more efficient? Uh, what are the technologies that we have expertise on in-house? How long would it take us to build this thing? What's the cost of operating the containers that we have right now. So you're you're kind of this bridge between two. You get the technical stuff, you get the business stuff, you go back to your desk, and then you start designing a solution using cloud services on either AWS, GCP, Azure, whatever. You see that to be a successful solutions architect, it requires a wide variety of skills. So how does one get started? I would say usually the typical path is either someone coming from 
development background. So let's say you are a software engineer. So you start as a junior, right? Um, you, you're just doing what you're told, uh, pretty much solving problems uh, in front of you that you pick from tickets on the JIRA board. Then you progress a little bit uh, to intermediate, then you progress to senior. Now you don't only, now your focus and your view is actually much wider. You don't just focus on the day-to-day -day operation, you are thinking ahead. Right? Then you get your progress to the team lead job. And now as a team lead, you're not only uh, focused on solving problems using technology, you are being involved. You start being involved into discussions with business stock stakeholders. You have this direct connections with project managers, uh, product managers. If it's a startup and there's not a ton of bureaucracy, then you might be even have you know direct link uh, of connection with the CEO, CTO. So you start getting more involved into business, and then after that, you can probably become a software architect. Now, you don't only think about or I would say your blast radius is not limited to only what your team does or the technologies they're working on. You're actually required to understand what the whole company is going towards, right? You start thinking about, you know, as a, as a junior developer, you think about day to day. Senior, you start thinking about weeks. You know, you're trying to anticipate what's gonna come in the next week. As a tech lead, you're thinking in quarters. You're thinking in like, what's gonna happen in the next three months. I think as a software architect, you're thinking in terms of years because you're, tri you're pretty much trying to build like a roadmap for your company to go on. So you're actually, your view is a little bit wider and then you get, and also your scope of, of influence is wider. And then after that, you can choose to specialize as a solutions architect where you are now doing a 50-50. 50% business, 50% technology, but the 50% business is actually kind of read only, right? You don't, you don't take decisions on business. You absorb these decisions on business. Your scope of influence is on the technology side. You also start to have some decision authority, decision making authority, right? As a solutions architect, you can easily say, uh, you can easily choose the technology to use and you could easily choose the frameworks to use. And, of course, you're not just gonna wake up and, and come up with these things. Hopefully you have built MVPs and, and had a ton of discussions and, and, and did your research. So when you come up with these discussions, uh, with these ideas, they are well backed, but you have uh, a, a decision authority. So this is really how I think about it. This is how I see the role being uh, played out out there. Okay, next question. This is a question from 1990 Chula. I have no idea what that means, but the question is, I have Amazon Photos and Google Photos, but I want to organize it for social media. I can't seem to find a cloud storage that's unlimited space. Any suggestions? I mean, <laughs> I don't know, man. It's, as much as I appreciate all comments, there's nothing I could, you know, it's just, the YouTube channel is not a technical forum. So, you know, I, the question is there if any one of you want to chime in. Uh, and, and help, but I, I don't have any suggestions. Let's move to the next question. This one is from Trevor from the Win the Cloud community. Hey Trev. He says, hey Elias, my question is, what is your goal with this community? Great question. My ultimate goal, my vision, <laughs> the, where I wanna take this, my vision is for everyone, is to have a tailored path for everyone who joins the community. Everyone who can come in with an idea in their mind, whether they want to become a solutions architect, an infrastructure architect, a cloud engineer, they would have a tailored path, right? Not just one course for pretty much everyone, but multiple paths uh, that you could navigate. That's, that's the end goal. <laughs> that's, that's, the, uh, that's the vision. Of course, it's gonna take a couple of years before we get there, maybe even more, because there's a ton of content that needs to be created. Think about it. Everyone has their own strengths and weaknesses and backgrounds and aspirations and stuff there, uh, you know, advantages and pros and cons and, and whatever. So I need to create a ton of content uh, before we get to that tailored path for everyone. In the meantime, you know, I still need to support my family, uh, uh, pay the mortgage and all these kind of things, but I'm a very patient person. 
and I believe we will definitely get there. Um, right now, I'm starting with SA Magic. That's my signature course uh, that helps IT professionals to, tr to transition into the solutions architect role, the cloud solutions architect role, and we're launching the second edition next week. And for SA Magic, I only chose to accept IT professionals because again, everyone has a different background. And although I read all the messages, I read all the comments from people coming in uh, fresh from school, for example, I can't accept those people into the program because then we would have a wide uh, uh, area that we need to cover in the course and the program. And that also takes a lot of time uh, for me personally uh, at this point. So I will have to, and that's what I'm thinking about is creating a course specific for students, right? A specific path for students coming from a computer science background. Uh, create a specific course uh, for people who are not technical, who are coming from a sales background or, or something else. So yeah, that's that's pretty much the vision. It's gonna take, take some time, but that's what I want to take this community. The second thing why I started building the community is, you know, Creating content for the sake of creating content is going to be to become a thing. It's already a thing. So there's a ton of noise out there. So I believe what's going to come next is people are going to pull back from these social networks, join like three or four communities, and that's all we need. I don't need to go through a sea of a ton of drama. And like you go on Twitter right now, you see Twitter algorithm is pushing ton of dramatic stuff trying to keep engagement. There's wars here and accidents here and gunshots here and violence here. I just want to keep updated with what's in the cloud. <laughs> That's what I care about. You know, we say that the biggest invention or the biggest advantage the, the, the media has is take something completely unrelated and make you care. Like they would take a volcanic eruption that happens 5,000 kilometers away and then make me care about it. And we are all humans, of course, and we care about what's happening uh, to each other, but I don't wanna be bombarded by that stuff. So that's why I'm just a stepping away from social media. And of course I have a Twitter, but that's really personal. I just, you know, put my thoughts out there. But yeah, so that's, that's why I'm trying to grow this community for people who want to grow in the cloud, find careers in the cloud. And I have a lot of ideas and you guys also bring in a lot of ideas, like why not job board? But you know, everything is, has to come uh, in, its, uh, in the right time. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Keep asking me questions in the comments and let me know if you like this type of content so we can make more and more of it. My name is Ilias. Again, thank you for watching and peace out.